Hello friends, my name is Dr. Sunil Bhatt. I am the Director and Clinical Lead of Pediatric Hematology, Oncology and Bone Marrow Transplant at the Nara Health in Bangalore. Um, as you know, I have been bringing out this series on various aspects of thalassemia care to you um, in, through these small videos. Um, now, this today's videos, videos are going to be the continuation of what we talked about, bone marrow transplant in thalassemia major. We have discussed in the last video about different types of donors which can be used for transplantation. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing with you what are the preparations the family and the patient has to go through before coming in for the transplantation. Thalassemia is a very, very interesting disease because in, in thalassemia probably is the only disease wherein the age or the condition of the patient plays a very, very important role in our chances for cure. The better the child is or the patient is managed for his thalassemia before coming for transplantation, better the outcomes, right? So by this, what do I mean? So there are three things which are important when we consider thalassemia as a transplantation. One is age of the patient. Second is how good their iron levels or iron overload is managed. And number three, how well they are transfused and the transfusion you know, if, uh, efficacy we measure in the terms of liver size, how big the liver is, right? So these are the three things which are important. So more age of the patient versus the outcome. Younger the patient, better the outcome, right? Second, as I said, is iron chelation. So better iron chelation, better the outcome. And third is better transfused, lesser liver size, better the outcome. So I'll take them one by one. Age. When do we start transfer for thalassemia age patients? We usually transplant tra thalassemia patients only after one and a half to two years of age. And after that, earlier the better. We usually do not transplant thalassemia less than one and a half year. But after that, you know, actually at usually, usually we start at two years and younger the patient after that, the better the outcome. It has been seen that patients who are more than seven years of age, their outcomes are less, you know, uh, better, they're inferior to patients less than seven years of age. So younger the patient, the better it is. That's number one. Number two is iron overload. So if you've got a high iron overload, which is measured as ferritin or even t 2 star MRI versus going to the outcome. So it's important for preparing these patients for months and sometimes years together before transplantation to get their iron overload as less as possible, get their ferritin as low as possible. So when I talk about ferritin as low as possible, it's better to be around 1000 or, you know, you know, ideally less than 1500. And same thing on the MRI also, the less iron load is the better outcome it is. Now the third important aspect is efficacy of transfusion. How effective your transfusion is you are giving them for, for, you know, for thalassemia major. If, if you're demanding good levels of 9.5 to 10.5 before giving blood, your liver is not increased in size, your spleen is not going to increase in size. So hence, a big liver is always a problem. So we want the liver size to be lesser than. So again, we can work on these patients for months and years together before the transplantation so that we can reduce their liver size, reduce their ferritin, and we can at the same time, you know, prepare them for the transplant in these various aspects. So that is what a patient, you know, condition is important to, for the chances of cure they have. So as a doctor, as a primary referral, we need to tell the family that yes, transplant is possible, but we need to prepare this patient in these two, two three aspects. And that can take sometimes weeks and months together before we treat, take them for transplant. That's number one, how to prepare the patient. Number two, it's very, very important for family to understand that what a transplant would entertain, would, would entail, what is there for them to go through this process. As I said earlier on, Transplanted thalassemia is an option. It's not a compulsion. So it always comes the risk and the risk depends on various factors. I'm going to get into that now at, in this current video, but the families understand that if we, if we choose a transplant as an option, it will come with its own problems. And one of the problems also risk, you know, which, which, which the transplant encounters. So it's very important to make the family understand the whole transplant process, which includes pre-transplant preparation, transplant admission for a month, at post-transplant follow-up, which, which continues for a few months, very strictly, and then after, almost after a year after transplant also, and that whole lot of activity has to be explained to the patients you know, um, in, in, in great detail. One of the very important questions with the patients the families have sometimes is that, can a carrier be a donor? 
yes carrier can be a donor there is no problem about it about it the other question they have is is it harmful for the donor no it is not harmful for the donor we, we you know uh, donors you know are very well and you know assessed tested before they donate and when they are deemed to be healthy and they are fit to be healthy donation they will be you know, taken for donation and and there has been thousands and millions of you know transfers that happen all over the world it has been seen that the donation process for the donors have been is on on a, on a relatively very very safe and i don't think we need to worry too much about the donor as an option so as a as a parent we are when we're going for a transplantation we need to you know need to maintain these patients in a relatively good state you know complete the vaccinations which are supposed to be given for these for these patients and in, in fact the siblings also should have the vaccinations done you know um, look look at the ferritin levels which need to be reduced as much as possible look at the liver size and other things which need to be reduced as much as possible before transplantation which is called as down risking so that we optimize the patients before they come for transplant and families also need to be make understood that for for few months post transplantation these patients need to be keep in isolation environment and they need to understand what and we'll discuss that in a little bit great detail later on of what is the post transplant care required for a patient with thalassemia so in the short video i try to explain you what is a preparation required for a thalassemic patient before we go in for the transplantation and why some of these things are important to be done before uh, we embark on a transplant journey thank you very much